people. All right, how's it going? Good. 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 I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's like three people on teams. Yeah, I know that people are venturing out of uh, their caves. Very, very nice. All right, so question, comments about anything? So we're going to go for the public. Yeah. And the new document is coming out constant. I don't know if that's still going to happen. What do you mean constant? You change the parameters and you get the same value out? Like I thought it would increase or decrease depending on the ranges. But it's the same number. Mm. Does it give you um, the luminosity for each layer? Yes. Okay, and that doesn't change? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I haven't tried changing the parameters. Maybe that would help. So you change the mass and what else? The mass is uh, the mass. Oh, and the composition is like size and the uh, temperature. So the mass should be the parameter that matters the most, right? Mm -hmm. So it, by how much did you change it? I did 3.24. Did, did you try like 2, 4, 10? No. Okay, try so like not. kind of not not like two orders of magnitude difference, mm -hmm. but you know, like twice or five times uh, as much. Okay. You should see some differences. So, yeah. Okay. I'll show that. Hmm? I don't think we need to question for. From the homework? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I upload the solutions. Did you check them out? Check them out. So, what what questions uh, specifically do you have? Um, I guess the confusion to when I put the temperature was higher, I think you're supposed to assume that it gets the same on the layer. You know, you have ten times the R mass. But I didn't know what you were supposed to like. What would that base the R mass? So okay. it does. So there's like there's like an easy way to do this and a, I guess more thorough way of doing it. So I derive uh, VRMS um, in the solutions, but you can just look it up you know, on the internet. So I, I kind of looked up some stuff and like. I think they were. Who's this? Yeah, but like we have the temperatures unknown, right? Mm, yes. So then, which which parameter? Like I don't know. How do you get an value out of it? So the temperature is what you want to get, uh -huh. and okay. you have. So essentially you have like um, conversion between kinetic and potential energy. Like, you know, at, at its core, it's a very simple problem. So the U just comes from the Coulomb interaction. And you, know, you have to guesstimate what the, the distance is gonna be. Um, I use two. Fermis because the radius of uh, a proton is like one Fermi. The bottle they touch, it's two. Um, this one is going to be the reduced mass. And then this V squared is going to be 10 times the RMS. 
Uh, this one's going to be, you can just replace it with new. So, and VRMS um, squared, it's going to be 3 kBT over mu. And so you get rid of the mu's and you just have to solve for t. Yeah, I mean, you move everything to the other side and you solve for the, the temperature. That's, that's what you want to do. So to get VRMS, um, you remember the definition of the mean as an integral and a probability distribution? Yeah. Right. So VRMS is um, square root of the expectation value of V squared, square root of that. So I uh, put the V squared over here, and then the um, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So if you solve the integral, you get this. So I couldn't solve that stuff on the but I just felt like I had two more numbers No, no, it's just it's just this one. And you you have to make some some um, some guesses with like R. I think that's it's really the only one. Does it have to be two terms? It, it doesn't. So actually in my solutions, I have the temperature and then there's like, I got some numerical value um, times that, that distance. Because you don't know exactly what that is. And actually there's, um, you know, they're, they're not like, like marbles. Uh, you actually have a mass distribution for the protons as well. So you know, if you assume, the, the thing is that this is just a, a linear, it's called linearly. So if you assume like one or 0.5 or doesn't affect that much. But yeah, so. We're going to continue using these, these concepts. So for homework number four, you will have to derive a few things that I'm not going to derive here, but I'm going to use. So remember that, you know, we had Uh, this idea of the nuclear reaction. So this is going to depend on the rate. It's going to depend on the number density of A atoms the number density of B atoms. So if you have more of each, then it's more likely that you're going to have a solution. And then the cross section of this particular nuclear reaction and the velocity, the relative velocity between the A and B atoms. And of course, this you know, is related to the temperature and to the energy. So we've got to, this is the rate if you multiply it times Q, which is the amount of energy that this uh, nuclear reaction is going to produce. And you divide by the density, then this is 
um, an energy that's this is going to be energy per unit uh, per unit mass uh, per unit time. So if you have a kilogram of sun, how much energy is it going to produce? Okay, so I'm going to define a few things over here. And you're gonna, you're gonna need this for your homework. So XA is the, so X is going to be the composition. So XA is how many atoms or what percentage um, fraction of this. Fraction of A atoms and fraction of B atoms. And XA plus XB is equal to one. So I think for the uh, for the start model that you can download, um, I think it allows you to put in like fraction of hydrogen, fraction of helium, and fraction of other stuff, metals. But you know, for the most part, um, in most stars, helium and hydrogen, for example, Going to be close to one. But in any case, this is going to refer just to this particular uh, nuclear reaction. So if you have you know, proton, proton, and you have some, I don't know, nitrogen atoms over there, you don't do anything. So this is still your, your condition. So I guess you focus um, piecewise on each part of the, of the chain. So just based on the definition of density, so the number density is rho, and then the composition, the fraction of uh, atom A. The same for and B. So MH is the mass of uh, hydrogen uh, nucleus, so the proton. And A is the number of nucleons that you have in your uh, in the nucleus. So A is number of protons times number of neutrons. And we are assuming that you know, this is close to the mass of the proton. There's a tiny difference between the mass of the proton and the neutron. Uh, it's negligible in this case, so we can just use MH or take some average. All right, so yes. So then we can rewrite the energy density for unit time. So instead of having the NAs, I'm going to put this in there. And then we still have the cross section. The um, energy release per reaction, and the one over 
go, and we can get rid of this uh, those guys. And because you know this is always AB, I'm going to stop using it. That's just the heat, sorry, the energy and the, uh, the cross section. Okay. Um, oh, and I forgot about those guys. You can even do. So we're going to look at this velocity. We don't have a single we don't have a single value for velocity velocity distribution, just like we saw before. So Maxwell Boltzmann. And the cross section is mm, I, think, I think there's something anyways, um, it has a energy part. So we're going to rewrite the maximum Boltzmann distribution in terms of the energy. And this is a distribution. So we're going to get the expectation value. That will give us the expectation value of the energy density. This is okay. So I know that I called it F number. The um, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, but I'm going to use F for something else. I'm just going to call it P. I'm not going to use this P very often, even then, very much. Okay, so this is just the expectation, uh, the, the definition of the expectation. Yeah. Yes, I will. So I'm going to replace it. So this was in spherical coordinates. So in spherical coordinates, you will get like from zero to infinity. And then the, the area is equal to five. But yeah, I'm going to write everything in there. <laughs> uh, this is just everything is in the P right now. So it wouldn't make much sense to go negative because this is just the velocity. So it's only defined with respect to each other. And I guess we only care about the magnitudes of the velocity. Okay, so we can use 
instead of using the mass, this is going to be the relative velocity between the A and B atoms. So the shape is the same, it's still a maxwell boltzmann distribution. But you know, it's like looking at each A atom and the relative velocity with all the B uh, atoms, and then doing that for each A atom. So it is the variables I choose to include. Okay, so P of B, four pi There, this squared. So instead of going you know, from D, 3D, I'm just using DV. So how do you, how do you divide this one? Well, this one is V squared sine theta, P, DV, D theta, D V. Well, if you're going to do it in spherical coordinates, you're going to need the double integral, and that's where you get your four pi. And you just keep this one. So now, We're going to make a substitution so that we can rewrite this in terms of the energy. It's v squared, then the e is. So the mm -hmm. so we can rewrite this integral in terms of the energy. And I'm going to, going to skip a few steps, but you can look at them in my notes. So, this P is a function of E. Which is equal to um, C 
or you will find to be We can put it over here. Mm. It's still, even though we're changing the variables, still from zero to infinity. There was one exponent, so this is part of the sigma. This is the gamma energy, and this is just the E variable, energy variable. And we had the other exponent from the natural Poisson. Let's And the exponent continues over here. Okay. So after doing the algebra, It's going to be eight over mu pi to the one half. Cross section. Temperature to the three halves. Integral from zero to infinity. That comes from cross section, so from the probability of uh, tunneling and one from um, from temperature. So we can call this one F. So if we plot it, The first factor, just like that. And this one goes like this. Not to scale. This is what I mentioned last time before we left. So if you multiply them, I'm going to get something that looks like that. Actually, it's going to be more narrow. So it's going to look like a Gaussian. And it's going to be you know, very close to zero everywhere else. So, mm -hmm. Yes. 
This one has the energy, the denominator, and this one in the denominator. So EG is a constant. Yes. So this guy you know, it comes from so this is the comes from the tunneling. Quantum tunneling probability. So why do you think that it decreases with energy? But why will quantum tunneling decrease with energy? There's a lot of relationships in here. But you know, the higher energies, they spend less time close to each other. Um, and then this one is the probability that they find each other. Um, the probability that they have enough energy. Hmm? Mm. Yeah. Yes. But if they're moving faster, they spend less time close enough to tunnel to the Coulomb potential. So we're going to define a few things over here to test the lab uh, One of them is. E not, and the other one is um, we're going to call it delta. So this is the expectation value and the actual expectation value, but you can consider that this is a Gaussian centered around this expectation value and has some width delta. So, How can you find this value? Hmm? Yep. So if you if you take the integral, then you're gonna get the area. Say that again. The length. Yeah, but it's um. If you had a nice, you know, geometrical figure, it would be easier. I mean, it's a it's a Gaussian. It's not. Not impossible, but there's an easier way. Well, we we have we have the whole thing. Is this this multiplication? 
So if you take the derivative from the k equal to zero, you get that one. That's what you have to do in the homework, right? To find the, either the maximum or the minimum, in this case, it's the maximum. And the width So for the width, you can, it's a little bit more complicated. You can tailor expand the distribution in terms of the energy. And you just take like the first few terms, probably just the, the first one. So the, the first one that doesn't, that is not zero. Okay, so why would we want to, to have these values? Yeah. But is, I'm not calling it sigma because this is not like rigorously a Gaussian. This is close to a Gaussian. So I think if you if you tailor expand one of the terms is going to be the Gaussian, and then the higher order terms are going to be corrections. Okay. But you don't you don't you ignore those corrections. Mm -hmm. So if we know these two things, then uh, we can just integrate it as a Gaussian. So otherwise the integration, the integral is pretty difficult. So what is the integral of a Gaussian? <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> what if it's not normalized? So it's going to be, usually this is called like I. Yes, this is the error function. Even though like, that does sound like another vocabulary word that would say this, like coming from a thousand is an error function. Well, that tells you that I've seen, I've seen a lot about it. Like, Pretty much all of statistics is not all, right? But a lot of statistics is built on orgasm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some variable A. Yeah, yeah, at some point there's nothing new. <laughs> things it was nice to the, things get more complicated, like the integrals get more difficult, but the concepts. Like it was, it was kind of like doing problems for us, but it's just like, let's keep grabbing the Gaussian part of the word and like grabbing the other Gaussian. So we can rewrite the f function as a Gaussian um, and get these parameters. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we have, we can replace everything on this integral in terms of stuff that we know. The only one that we have not look at is this one. What is F at E naught? The height, okay. So that gives you, you know, like how tall or how high this uh, Gaussian is. And this gives you the, the spread of the Gaussian. So, I'm going to use this K. So K was all that stuff at the beginning. A. Pi. Okay, so that's a lot of writing stuff that we don't need inside of the integral, so just using K. And Again, I'm going to skip a few steps, mostly because this whiteboard sucks. But you can look at my notes. So we're going to end up with this. Which one? No. Sorry. Guess I got rid of something. No, A is this one. Oh, okay. So A is the height. <laughs> yes. Sorry, we don't have. It'd be nice if, like, this whole wall, we had a white like, chalkboard. Like, Over here it continues. Mm. Okay, so this is essentially just um, plugging in the A and the C in here in the solution. Um, and this C is the spread, which was what I had there before. So you know, that solves the, the, the integral. And this K is all the stuff that we had at the beginning. So the, 
Can you repeat that? Yes. Um, no, 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 it is E. So the only one that has the, the E not. No, this this C is is not evaluated at E not. It's just uh, the energy. B is B is the, the mean, right? The average. Um, Okay, you're right. Yes. The mean the width only depends on EG, which is a constant. Okay, thanks. Okay, and then this one. This is the first exponent, then the other one. So eventually you end up with 3G or KPT. One this is just substituting the E naught that you are going to find.
So we have this one and we have this one. So putting it, putting everything together. I'm going to do the exponent algebra first. It's going to be exponent. there. And you can make them equal. You can do a four down here. And now we need an eight to the one third over here. Instead of your exponents, you get minus three uh, e chain. And outside of your exponents, um, just have numbers and some pipes. Hmm? I didn't do it correctly. I think I should have removed this one. Yeah, you got there. But so that you have the same uh, fraction in both. And then you get one over here and two over here. This is K, all that stuff. Um, Squeeze this two pi. When you plug in all the values of the K,
So this one, when you multiply it times the rho x a x b over m h squared a a a b, you get the they just verify that factor, they're proportional. So this is going to be the energy. I'm going to put the row in there. Okay, what do you think? Is it long? I know, right? <laughs> so it's like, it looks it looks long. Um, but it's it, it's pretty insightful. So EG you know, the gamma energy. Is I alpha, then the charges of the, of the two colliding particles squared. And mu, the reduced mass, and I, I included the derivation of the reduced mass uh, also in the solution for problem four. So it's mh squared. S not is the uh, cross section, so can be derived, can be measured, uh, can be derived from more fundamental physics. So tells you how often or how how likely it is that you have a reaction. The EG uh, parameterizes the nuclear reaction. So if you have you know, P plus P, then these ones are one. If you have P plus carbon, then the Zs change, like one of them in this case. And also the reduced mass changes. So these are the parameters that describe your nuclear reaction. Xa and Xb are the compositions uh, in the reaction of the, I guess, the two uh, particles. So for a particular reaction, for a particular composition, so this one will depend on the star, the evolution, chemical evolution of the star. So 
and U. Energy released by by reaction. So that uh, expectation value of the energy depends on the reaction that you're looking at, the star that you're that you're looking at. What about the temperature? Does it matter? How does it matter? What about the, the density? These are the ones that I have known written down in here. Hmm? Yep. So So what matters the most, probably, I guess, you know, each parameter has its importance. Uh, but because we have an exponent over here, the, uh, the gamma energy and the temperature are going to be the most important parameters. So if the gamma energy Now let's consider these two reactions. PP and um, P carbon. Which one has uh, the largest gamma energy? Well, this one has a pretty big charge compared to just a proton. Mm -hmm. So this mass should be larger for this one too, right? So then EG is larger for which one? For this one. So then what does that tell you about the, the energy? You have a negative exponent in there, this one is larger. Um, I don't think that's uh, that tells you anything about the, the time, but I think one interpretation is like a probability, but I think you're on the right track. So it is less likely that you're going to have this reaction, right? So you know, given the same number of proton-proton uh, and proton-carbon, this one is more likely to happen. And if the temperature is low, then this, you know, this goes to zero, the average energy that you get out of that reaction, which makes sense. That's why we don't have this reaction in the, in the sun. It's not hot enough. But as you increase the temperature, then you can bring some of these uh, reactions between heavier nuclei um, into um, a range where I should give you energy, that you can get energy out of it. So stars are going to burn their protons before they burn other stuff. 
and that is in there. And in order to burn heavier elements, you need a higher temperature. So you know, that's pretty, I think that's, that's pretty insightful. The energy is going to depend on the chemical evolution to the, uh, the compositions. And there's another, there's another relationship that is more subtle with the, with the density. So if you increase the density, then you will increase the average energy that you're getting out of this reaction. How can you decrease your, your density? What phenomenon would decrease your density when you start? Sorry, increase. Right. So maybe you can increase the mass, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that will like increase this one, right? So let's go in the other direction. What happens if suddenly you increase your temperature and so your average um, energy output increases? What will happen to the density? Why? So you, you, you increase the temperature, then you increase the, uh, the emission, right? This will increase the luminosity, so um, the, the power. Uh, that will, not all of it, it's gonna be able to escape the star because of the opacity, kappa. So that is going to increase the internal energy of the star. And that is going to increase the pressure and decrease the density. But if the density decreases, what happens to the energy? Output? It decreases. So, this relationship, um, I guess it out-regulates the, uh, the emission and the density of the star. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty cool. So you know, they are either in equilibrium and it will be thermodynamic equilibrium if it's um, releasing the same energy that, you know, through the surface that it is producing. Uh, but if it's not in perfect equilibrium, then it's oscillating with small oscillations around, around that equilibrium. So that's pretty cool. That's why um, it doesn't really matter the mass of the star uh, if they are burning the same stuff. Like, you know, let's say a star that is 0.8 solar masses or 1.1. The temperature of their core is going to be very similar, um, even if there's more stuff around you know, inside of the core, because of these because of this equation. Um, if the temperature changes enough that you can burn other stuff, then that changes the uh, internal structure of the star. Uh, I guess other stuff that can change the structure. Uh, when it starts burning you know, more and more material, then these proportions can change. So let's say that at some point there's no hydrogen. What happens to the energy, the average energy? You know, one of them is zero, then that's zero, then it's, it's stopped. So you know, there's there's so much 
uh, physics in this equation. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. Okay, that's, uh, that's what I have for today. So we're almost done with stars. We're gonna look at convection, which is the last um, phenomenon that can play a role. And in allotropes, that's it. And we can go to other stuff. Okay, um, questions? So, Mm, you guys are not that active in the in the, in the forum discussion. <laughs> Why? Are they too difficult or too time consuming? I guess it's the time. Hmm. So should I decrease like the I guess the time commitment? Well, so I was thinking instead of having a scientific paper, you know, I can have like a, at least a percentage of the time, um, like a pop science article. Yeah. I guess you could do that on the weekend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so this discussion and the one that is due today just have like different models and uh, genetic algorithm to select between models. And each model is kind of like what you're working with, just the different parameters. So, yeah, all right. I guess I will, I will use I kind of easier. That, uh, since it's supposed to be, we could do an answer. Yeah, just like answer one of the questions. I kind of felt like when I was commenting on other people, that was like, well, first off, last discussion, they, like, they, a lot of those people had like citations for plasma constraints. Mm -hmm. like, so when I looked at those, I was like, okay, I can't comment on that because I looked that up. So I, didn't really that. And I then, see. Uh, I don't know. It kind of felt, it spoke a little competitive when I was commenting. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just me. Uh, that person. You know, it should not be competitive, just, mm, you know, write down what you understand and you know, try to, it's, it's, it's not about, you know, reading more or, it's, 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 it's about the physical insight. Yeah. Um, I saw a pretty cool quote the other day by, um, uh, John Wheeler said, don't calculate anything until you know the answer. So you know, just try to get the physical insight. And it's not about the math or anything. It's about, you know, what, what can you learn from that? So the third forum discussion, it is, it is an article, but it is very, it's very easy to understand. It's a, I think it's a science article, and it's just about, uh, it has this really cool diagram. So it's a periodic table, and for each element, it tells you what percentage of the atoms were formed by different uh, phenomena. phenomena. So like hydrogen it was all created um, right after the Big Bang. And like helium, and some of it is created in stars, a bunch of it in right after the Big Bang. And so you can look at all the elements. I thought it was pretty cool. It's easy to read. Um, but yeah, I will, I guess I will do easier, more like perhaps opinion based um, articles. Okay, cool. Let's go then.